Howdy everybody. We're here to finally hook up the water tanks to the harvesting mechanism that we have up here on the roof of the greenhouse. And so we're going to extend this pipe here that's coming down into the tanks. This has been a long project. We've had these tanks for a while. You may have seen them out there in other videos. And it's taken us so long because there's been just one thing after another that has gotten in our way. One of us gets sick, one of us is injured. It took a long time to put the base of this and get that right and level. And today was no exception. There seems to be a rule in homesteading and farming that every time you start a new project, you're going to have to go to the hardware store. No matter how prepared you think you are, there's always something that you forgot or something that you didn't do right. We got started a little late today because we had to take a trip to the hardware store. So the first step is connecting this little invention that I've made here. This is just a bowl like you get in the grocery store and three inch PVC pipe and put some silicone around here so that it'll be watertight. And now this is gonna go here without any PVC glue. Why? Because we may need to take this out for some reason and we don't want this glued in here and to have to buy a whole new thing of this. And this has a story in and of itself. This is in the wrong place. It really was supposed to be over here. But as I've told you in other videos, I have difficulties with spatial orientation. And these tanks were outside of the fence for quite a while. And I installed this when the tanks were out there. I thought I had it all figured out. Well, it really should have been over here, but it's here. And it turns out that that's actually going to work out better because something that I hadn't thought about was that the tubo here is a little bit out of line. So I think that we'll be able to get this over without any problem. So step one is this. Now this is here to catch any debris. And I bought this in the grocery store. This is just a, a little colander and this fits in here perfect. And so now the tube will be right above here. The water will come out here and any debris can be caught in here and just taken out and thrown away. So that's the whole purpose of this. This is a, a perfect example of women thinking about a project <laughs> using kitchen utensils. So now I have to measure the distance between this pipe and get at least a ballpark idea. This is 150 centimeters here. Okay, so one problem is that the guys, when they originally hooked this up, they put it so the tube would go straight down here. And I cut the tube so that we can run it over there. But unfortunately, it's out of alignment. It has to move over this way a little bit in order for that to work out. So they put some wire around the tube here. And I'm going to have to cut that or see if I could twist it off. Okay, so there's the wire. Now can we move it? Yes, we can. Okay, so I had to move this and I put new wire up here and uh, tied it up. So now we're gonna put the, the elbow on here. These big ones are always a little more difficult to do. Okay, we've run into a bit of a problem here and we're not going to solve it right now. So I'm going to have to get in here with some sandpaper and sand these off so that we can put this back in. It didn't go in very well. So let's finish the, the final part. These are the two connectors here and they're the reason why we had to go back to the hardware this morning because I had measured these and if you measure from the outside here, it's two inches. And so I thought I needed PVC like this with threads on it of two inches 
Well, it turns out they don't do it by measuring that. You do it by measuring this, and this is one and a half inches. So this fits in there fine. The kind of the last thing we have to do is put some Teflon tape on here. This is something that is not easy to do because the twist of it is like this. So you want the Teflon tape to be in the opposite direction. If you don't put this Teflon tape on, you wind up with leakage. But it has to be put in the opposite direction that you're turning. And now you just kind of stretch it out around there. You're not trying to go crazy with it. It's just enough to fill in the threads a little bit so that water cannot get in there and escape. So there's number one. Again, this is turning in this direction, so the Teflon tape is going on in the opposite direction. So now, what are we trying to do here? We have two tanks. We have one tank that is going to receive water from the roof here. This tank will also receive it, but it's not going to receive it directly. It's going to receive it indirectly down here. So as soon as this begins to fill, we're going to have a bridge here between the two, and this one's going to fill too. So the first step in that is to put this in here. Get it nice and tight. Now I've found that if you don't use the channel locks to get it a little bit better, and you can do it with your hand, you wind up with a problem of leakage. Okay, so we've, we've got the bridge pipe in here. It's a little bit more difficult than I thought it was going to be because Lena pointed out to me that we couldn't just put it in there. We're going to have to move one of the tanks. So we did that. We have not put any PVC glue in this bridge pipe. We've done that on purpose. For example, if we have to clean the tanks, we're going to have to separate this, and we want to be able to do it easily. Obviously, if we put the PVC glue in there, the only way to do it is we're going to have to cut that, and we're going to have to go and buy two more of these joiners here. And that gets a little expensive, and we could do it by just having the bridge pipe. And what's going to happen is as the water fills up, the pressure of the water will force the water from this tank into this one. And until this one is full and this one is full, they'll actually be even until they get full. Now, what else do I have to do? I have to put an overflow pipe so if, if it ever gets full, it can overflow. And then we're going to put a pump inside the greenhouse here that is going to pump this water out of here. And we did this because last year, if you've been with us for a while on the channel, last year we suffered a lot trying to keep the sheep fed. One of the things was is we didn't have any water. We had a very severe drought last year during the dry season. It was more, more severe than usual. And so we had to buy these tanks so that we could fill these tanks, keep them full, and then we can water some of the grass that we feed the sheep with during the dry season, like the Cameroon grass. Howdy, everybody. Well, we're here a couple days later, and we've made some changes. We fixed the system. The system is finished now, but we've made some changes. Let me show you what they are. So here's the finished product. The water is going to come down from these canales up on the roof, goes over in this pipe, comes down, comes over here, and then goes down. Now, you'll notice that we eliminated my special invention here, which I think was a good idea, but it just wasn't a good idea for this. It overcomplicated things in a way that was not beneficial to the system. And that's because to have that catch-all on there required that this tube be unsupported. And as you can see right here, there's not any good place to build some kind of support. So I decided that what I'm going to ultimately do is put a screen up here where the canal and the tube hooks onto the canal. And we'll just have to use the ladder to go up and clean it out. It won't be as convenient, but it'll work. So that's it. 
I learned an important lesson from this project, and that's that the simplest solution sometimes is the best solution, and this was the simplest solution. So with that, I'll sign off. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.